In this video, I'm going to share which of GarageBand for Mac settings you should change as soon as possible, as doing so could make your music making life a lot easier. To access GarageBand for Mac settings, click on GarageBand in the toolbar at the top of the screen, then in this menu, select Settings. There are six tabs here, General, Audio slash MIDI, Metronome, Loops, Mic Info and Advanced. The first setting I recommend you change is right here in the General tab. If you've tried to open GarageBand Sampler or a third party plugin, and instead of it opening like this, it looks like this, the fix is right here. Under Accessibility, make sure the Open Plugins in Controls view by default box is not checked. As soon as you uncheck the box, you should see the sampler or plugin interface change from the rubbish controls view to its normal user interface. The next setting you'll want to deal with is in the audio slash MIDI tab. Under instruments and effects, you'll likely want to check the box marked enable audio units. If you leave this unchecked, any third party instruments and or effects like synthesizers, drums and reverbs etc that you've downloaded and installed on your Mac won't be visible in GarageBand's plugins menu. Check it, forget it and carry on. Easy peasy. In the Loops tab, I'd highly recommend checking the box marked Loop Browser, Display Original Tempo and Key. Checking this box will give you more information about the Apple Loops found in GarageBand's Loop Browser. Most Apple Loops will change tempo and key to fit into a project you're dragging and dropping them into, but having their original info available right here in the Loop Browser is very handy. You'll be able to refine your loops by tempo or key, which can be useful if you plan to build out a project with multiple samples together, for example. In the Advanced tab, you have the option to record in three different bit depths. 16-bit, 24-bit or 32-bit float. Now, you likely won't be able to tell the difference between audio recorded with any of these options, and I generally just set this to 24-bit and then leave it alone, but here's a rundown of each option. You'll want to use 16-bit only if you want to keep audio file sizes small, or if your audio recording device, like your audio interface, only supports 16 bits. 24-bit is the most commonly used bit depth for audio files, and 32-bit float uses 32-bit floating point calculations, which result in larger audio file sizes. When you do record with this setting, you can remove any digital clipping that occurred during the recording by simply lowering the gain of the audio region. You can also increase the gain of recordings with levels that are too low without increasing the noise floor. 32-bit float might be useful if you've made an error while recording. Maybe you didn't set your levels correctly and the signal clipped, or maybe you had the mic too far away from, I don't know, your acoustic guitar for example, and you want to boost that signal instead of just re-recording it. Otherwise, I'd recommend just sticking with the 24-bit option here. And finally, also in the advanced tab is what may be the most important setting out of all of them. At first glance, the auto normalize setting seems like it might actually be quite helpful. It states that when you export a project, auto normalize increases the volume if needed, so the project is not too quiet. It essentially adds compression at the point of export to make sure your exported audio file is a certain volume. While this will result in your exported song sounding a bit louder overall, it will cause problems if you then want to master that exported file and release it onto streaming platforms, for example. Because post-processing has already been applied when you export with this setting turned on, you will not have as much headroom when mastering, which will result in a flat, undynamic final mastered song. Here's what an isotope ozone mastering suite preset sounds like when applied to a GarageBand song that was normalized during export compared to the same song that was exported with this setting turned off.
Yeah, better to leave this option unchecked at all times, in my opinion. Now that your settings are sorted, here's everything else that you should do when you first open GarageBand.